We're at the California RV Show with Wes Nave from Zamp Solar. Today, we are gonna talk solar. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Kate and I have a lot of questions about solar. We've gotten a lot of questions on our YouTube channel, so we wanted to answer those and better educate ourselves as well as you guys as to how to size solar, what solar is, and a lot of the considerations that go behind putting solar on your rig. Wes, good to have you. Good to see you. So Wes, top level, what is the role of solar? Solar isn't charging or isn't running anything. It's one of the biggest questions that we get is, how much solar do I need to run my air conditioner? How much solar do I need to run my refrigerator? Solar is primarily recharging your batteries. Okay. So depending on how many batteries you have, the condition of your battery, your age of the battery, solar is there to recharge that battery back up. Got it. And then with solar, kind of describe, so what is the path from solar down into the van or the RV what components are necessary to actually plug something in and turn it on? There's three major components for solar. One is the solar panel, then the charge controller, that's the brains of the outfit. That's what takes the solar energy, converts it into, into power, which is primarily the job of the solar panel, that takes that energy and dis disperses it to the battery. Okay. And then the battery is your reservoir. So if you have a really old battery and you're thinking about solar, the first move is to upgrade your battery, get a really good reserve start, and then concentrate on getting solar. Okay, and then once the energy gets to the battery, how does it get dispersed across the RV? Once the, bat once the energy gets to the battery, then it's either put through um, different charging channels through your lighting. Uh, a lot of people like to use a, a single bus bar, run their wiring off of that. Um, it all depends on what, what system you're exactly looking to do and what you're looking to charge. We have people that use uh, breathing apparatus, okay. like to have those plugged in for the solar charge, keep their battery charged up. We have a lot of people um, that are under photography, need to recharge their batteries, to be running through that. One of the ideal systems is to take solar panel, charge controller into the battery, and then into some type of inverter. Okay. So you're inverting the power from the, from the sun in 12 volt configuration into 110 volts so you can plug in your, your CPAP machine, your battery chargers. Got it. So solar panel 12 volt down into a charge controller into a 12 volt battery in most cases. In most cases. And then you would invert that to 110 to run any appliance that you have to plug into the wall. Right. Okay, got yeah. it. A lot of people like to use six volt batteries, yep. which is perfect, put two of those together, that's 12 volts. That works really well. You get a lot of, you get a really deep charge. We are also start seeing the big influx of lithium batteries. Um, the jury's still out on, on lithium batteries from talking to a lot of the different upfitters, a lot of different customers, um, hearing different voices about lithium batteries. Uh, as, a, as a manufacturer that is in the primary business of recharging batteries, we're testing many lithium batteries right now and getting all those different charging parameters and that way we can change our firmware and get everything all set up. Got it. So it's important that all the components that go into any setup, starting with solar, need to work together, correct? Right. Okay. Absolutely. Everybody works in unison. Um, some of the things that, that we hear um, from different voices is I have a Brand X solar panel and a Brand Y charge controller. Can I put those together? Absolutely. The charge controller doesn't matter what solar power is going into it. It's 12 volt electricity, doesn't care where it comes from. That also gets into, do I have to use the same size solar panel when I'm putting multiple panels together? No, you can Tetris it up. We have a lot of different, uh, a lot of different manufacturers that use two or three different solar panels because of the amount of real estate that's on the roof. And as we look around the show today, you can see that there's a lot of different uh, a lot of different trailers, a lot of different vans, a lot of different motorhomes with different configurations. So there's no perfect size solar panel. There's just many different size solar Got panels. Got it. That actually leads me into my next question. So we've spent a few months in the Storyteller Overland, the uh, mode. Nice. Uh, there is a total of 90 watts of solar on the roof of Zamp solar panels. And that, for this van, it's not enough to even run the day-to-day -day operations of like having the fridge on constantly but they did pre-wire it for 600 watts of solar. Mm -hmm. So if we were gonna be living out of this van full time and we wanted to make solar a big part of our lives to really recharge that system and keep things going, what is the best way for us to go about sizing that system for all of the different things that we're using? 
That's a huge loaded question. Everybody's needs are, are different. There's no mm -hmm. two people has the same one. In the case of Storyteller, they've looked towards the future and figured, hey, we need to make this ready for people to have a lot more solar. Sure. You also don't just have to stay on the roof. You can go with a portable battery system okay. and use that in unison. You mean portable solar system? Yeah. Okay. That's all completely self-contained in a briefcase. For example, with this one, it's 630 watts. You can actually add 230 more watts of solar by having a 230 watt portable. Ah, interesting. So you okay. Can, you can add on top. Rule of thumb, you can never have too much solar. Nobody wants to run out of battery. Yep. So the more is better. But we also have to stay within your own parameters. Sure. You know, uh, have we seen the, the van with a trailer behind it that's a mobile solar showcase? Yep. <laughs> because all they're trying to do one thing and that's run their air conditioner. Yeah. which is the number one thing that people ask is, how much solar do I need to run my air conditioner? Well, you need to have the right size inverter, and most importantly, the right size amount of amp hours in your batteries. Got it. And there are a couple of manufacturers that are here um, that have made that a reality. Yeah, so this is one of them. This is one of yeah. them. There's a couple of motorhomes that are that way, and it's really cool to, to actually see the market move that way. Uh, it, it's unique, it's happening, and it's really, it's really exciting for us at ZAMP to be at the forefront and watch that happen. Got it. And to be able to help and be out there being the premium brand and be able to help all of our partners. Now, let's say Kate and I, either we go with something like this or we decide to build our own van. How easy it is, how, excuse me, how easy is it to, let's say, start with 200 watts of solar? We start with that, we realize it's not enough for the needs because I make coffee all the time. Kate's got her Instant Pot running. And it's great coffee too. If you ever run into them anywhere, <laughs> Stop and ask for a cup of coffee. It's it's a mere 85 degrees right now, so it's a little too a little too hot for it's coffee. Never too hot. Uh, <laughs> so my question is, like, let's say we start with 200 watts, mm -hmm. and we want to upsize that. How easy it is to how easy is it to upsize your system, and what considerations should, should someone take when they are building out their system to think of that ahead of time? Most important factor: available real estate. Okay. How much more room do I have to be able to put more solar panels? That's the, that's the most important. Like I said before, you can Tetris, you can put different sizes in there, but it's all about where you have free real estate. Uh, many systems are available, not only just from ZAMP, that are expandable systems, where you can actually link solar panels together. Okay. There is nothing wrong with that. It's been happening, you know, look at a, at a solar energy field. You know, that's all those solar panels are all linked together. Um, residential, they're all linked together. So doing the same thing on your coach, it's exactly that. just how much real estate do you have. And how important is it for us to size the gauge wires, the solar controller, and the rest of the components that go into it to get it to the battery? I'm glad you said that because that's something that is running rampant right now with a lot of DIYers trying to go cheap, trying to go cheap side. Um, not really knowing what they're doing. If you're concerned about the gauge of the wire, step up and go to a heavier gauge wire. The biggest concern of heavier gauge wire is not from the solar panel to the charge controller, but from the charge controller to the battery. We like to see eight gauge wire used a lot. We know that people are out there using 10 gauge. Eight gauge works great. You're getting into a larger system. Do the math, figure it out know exactly what you're getting into, but if in doubt, the best rule of thumb and the best practice, go heavier gauge. So for those who aren't aware of what gauge is, the smaller the gauge, the thicker the wire, correct? Correct. Okay. Now, so using a four is better than six, mm -hmm. exact, all the way down. Got it. So you mentioned DIYers. Kate and I have been talking about building out our own van, camper, whatever it is, but I am not an electrician. So in your opinion, for someone like myself, is it easy to do yourself without killing the people in the van? Or is it something we should look to a professional to do? Uh, that's a question that comes into our customer service department a lot. If you are not electrical minded, um, you haven't done a lot of electrical work, even though you're only dealing, dealing with 12 volt, unless you get into an inverter setup, yeah. hire a professional. Get that guy, ask him a couple questions. Have you ever done solar on a van before? Have you ever done any work on any RVs? What was the biggest problem you had? What did you run into? Uh, is there anybody that I can talk to that can tell me about how your install went? 
when you're installing a system, you need to be as sanitary as possible. Nice clean lines, don't jumble things up. Um, I have to say that we haven't seen it all. Um, we're not farmers, um, but we have a wall of shame <laughs> on some of the installs that we've seen. Um, we always encourage people to err on the side of caution, ask a professional's advice, or seek a professional to have it installed. So Wes, are there different types of solar panels that people can consider for these? Great question. There's three primary different types of solar cells that are on the market. One is an amorphous okay. solar cell, polycrystalline, and monocrystalline. The least expensive and most disposable is an amorphous. That's the type of solar cell you'll see in uh, landscaping lights, small ones, something you look at one summer, by the end of summer it's all great and you throw it away. Very inexpensive, doesn't last very long. Polycrystalline is the great imposter. Uh, there are some nice polycrystalline panels out there. Usually they might have the same wattage mm -hmm. as a premier monocrystalline, but they won't be able to produce the amperage that's needed to recharge the battery. So okay. it's always important to look at wattage and amperage. The best solar cell you can get is a monocrystalline cell, and they're graded A, B, and C. Um, most manufacturers try to use either a B or an A monocrystalline cell at Zamp Solar. We only use the best A plus monocrystalline cells. We've gotten to the point where we've gone all electric and we love it. It allows us to be off grid with a big battery system. You know, when we can, we run the AC. So I think our next rig, we're going to put as much solar as we can get up there. So. Perfect. That's a great idea. We're seeing more and more and more right now. Um, we are at, at, not say at, at full, full volume. Um, we're probably cranked up on the scale at about a nine to nine and a half. We're looking forward to cracking it up to 11 uh, with our new release of our obsidian panels. We're just pumping that up more, but we're starting to see a lot more people utilizing solar, using a lot more electricity inside the coach. Um, and, it, and it's awesome. Solar is one of the most misunderstood, easy to understand things there is. The more real estate, the more solar you have, the more opportunity your batteries won't go dead. Awesome. So as this, I will call this a bit of a primer into solar. Uh, for someone who wants to learn more, where should they start? Hmm. Obvious would be, you can call us anytime. Okay. You, you can go online to zampsolar.com. Uh, our phone number is there. You can call and talk to our customer service guys. Uh, we have some of the, the greatest minds that we know about in for, uh, for mobile solar. Uh, we have many, many people that just call and pick our brains, and it's okay. We like it. Some of those questions help us educate other people. Um, there's a lot of online things. Watch more of you. Yep. Learn more about solar. <laughs> um, it's, uh, if in doubt, go solar. Cool. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your own website. Site management has never been easier, as Squarespace allows you to edit your posts and comments on the go using their mobile app. Squarespace allows you to link your various social media accounts to your website so you can post simultaneously to all accounts. This is a great time saver, especially when you're out on the road, as it allows you more time to enjoy what life has to offer. Head over to squarespace.com slash the Russos to get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. Well, thank you, Wes. Absolutely. Let's go Appreciate get some coffee. It. Absolutely. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to learn more, head over to our website at we'retherussos.com. And if you want to see how we're using this van, all of the appliances, the AC and that, check out season two of Van Life. We will see you next time. Bye.